Well, welcome everybody. Um, thanks for your attention and joining this uh, or viewing this video. Uh, this is a project I started a while back to interview top performing salespeople. And today I want to introduce you uh, to Nicola Dabik, if I'm saying that right, Nicola. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who's, uh, who's a sales leader at uh, Medtronic. Yeah. And Medtronic, uh, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave you to explain it, Nicola, because I should. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Clear, for the invitation. It is really a privilege to, to be here with you and to discuss about sales. Uh, as you said, I work for Medtronic, which is the global healthcare uh, uh, technology uh, leader. And I have been with Medtronic for six years and five years. I serve as a business unit manager leading sales teams in uh, Southeast Europe uh, in the range of cardiovascular therapies. Before that, I also worked for another American company, which was uh, St. Jude Medical at that time. And overall, I have about 14 years of experience in medical device industry, mainly in sales. Also, I did some technical support and I work as a field technical engineer. Uh, uh, in the current role, uh, I am a therapy development manager, but uh, most of the time I spent as a, uh, as a salesperson and also as a sales leader as a business unit manager in Medtronic. That's excellent, Nick. Nicola. Thank you very much for explaining. Uh, and uh, so my first question then to dive straight in, um, what are the habits and practices that you consider to have been uh, most productive for you in, in your sales roles or, or when you on the selling side or for your people, if you like? First, allow me just to mention that whatever I mention uh, here on this interview is just my personal belief and does not reflect uh, the standpoint of my company. So uh, this is very important disclaimer just to differentiate uh, uh, the things from uh, official statements of, of my current employee. And going back to your question, uh, I think that the basic attributes are very simple. And uh, first is preparation. I think that preparation for a sales calls is uh, uh, very important first because uh, it helps you to make the best use of your time. So when you're on the field or if you're making a call by the phone, you will not have a whole day or uh, one hour. You will have a very, very specific time frame in which you have to catch the attention of the, of the people to, to which you are going to speak with. So I think that uh, good preparation allows you really to plan that time in the best possible way and also to know a lot of things about your customers that you can briefly validate to, during the conversation and you, that you can really focus on uh, discovering the needs and uh, explaining what the possible solution could be. And uh, uh, this is why I think preparation is, is very crucial. The second thing, as I said, is to focus on discovery of the need. And uh, my suggestion would be really to to act as a person who is bringing solution and not the person who is going to make sales because <laughs> this is something that uh, people on the other side would, would like really to, to see you as a person who will help them to, to advance in the job they're doing or in their personal life. And so spend, spend some good portion of time on discovery of the needs. And now I, I reflect what uh, Albert Einstein used to say, if I would have a uh, one hour to, to solve the problem, I will use 59 minutes in, in understanding what that problem truly is, and then only one minute to, to, to look for the solution. And uh, uh, discovery of the need is important because uh, our customers are not always aware what their biggest problem is. So we can really, with questioning, we can really help them to identify that. And uh, at the last point, uh, something that is uh, more and more seen today, uh, uh, it is really uh, importance of customer experience. So how your customer feel, feels during the conversation, how you make them feel, are they excited, are they curious, are they there to learn more, uh, or they're just finishing, or, or they're just waiting for you to finish the sentence and then to move on. So this would be three topics I would I would say that are our subjects important for for any any sales conversation no matter of the industry you are in that's extraordinarily thorough Nicola <laughs> yeah yeah I, I yeah. can tell you've put loads of preparation into it already <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. yes indeed yeah and more on, on that last point 
um, you, you said that you, the, the customer, you don't want the customer is sort of waiting for you to move on or waiting to get to the next bit. Um, what are your thoughts on getting the customer to talk? Well, uh, getting customer to talk, uh, you need to develop a technique of uh, asking open questions. This is the, the most important and uh, good thing about this and also overall sales is that uh, I think 99% can be learned. So natural born sales sales people are not something that I believe in, although I have seen many, many talented and gifted uh, uh, sales people, 99% can be learned. And the technique of asking open questions, which actually provoke people, uh, uh, people to talk is something that you want to learn to avoid the questions like uh, to, to avoid closed questions that they can answer with yes, no, or especially question why that is the question to, to avoid. Maybe it is always good to ask instead of why, what are the reasons? So that will give them, you know, more, yeah. more motivation to, to, to open themselves and, and to speak. And, and also uh, I can recommend here a, a book because I also think this is important that we really give a, a recommendation and advices to everyone who is listening to this. There is a great book. It is called uh, Great Leaders Ask Questions by Bob Bob Tide, uh, and uh, I think it takes 45 minutes to read it, but it wow. is very nice. What, yes. How do you spell his second name, Bob? Uh, it's T-I-E-D-E. -E. T-I-E-D-E, -E. brilliant. Yeah. Um, and uh, as I said, it, uh, it takes a short portion of time, but it is very useful, you know. And I can also uh, quote my favorite question for that from that book. Uh, uh, the question goes, uh, uh, what is impossible, but if it would be done, it would make a great impact on our success. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you know, people, uh, people will first ask you to repeat the question, but for sure, when they start thinking and speaking, yeah, it, it, it will make them, it will make them speak. And as I say, it will make the, the wheels roll in their head. And, and I tried that on, on one town hall and it really make the effort that uh, I wanted, so. Yeah, um, I think it was De, uh, De Bono who said, uh, a mind that expands to accommodate a new idea uh, yeah. never returns to its original shape. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, very much. And I absolutely agree with you about, uh, there's no such thing as a born salesman. I mean, well, you know, you wouldn't allow a born surgeon to operate on you, would you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Probably not, but Probably. but we have uh, born salesmen out there all the time, don't we? So, yeah. well, I sometimes. also I also have a uh, if, if you can uh, if you allow me just to a small digression. I think that the natural born salespeople are, are the people who have uh, uh, developed emotional intelligence and especially empathy. So they're empathic in listening and understanding the needs of the person who is sitting on the other side. They are not here to come knock on the door sell and go out they're here really to understand or at least they present them as, as that yeah. kind of person and this would be uh, the, the 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 something i would call as a natural born sales people yeah and i, th I think um yeah there's a lot of people who struggle with that aspect of communication and there are some that have, for whatever reason have become good at it um, mm -hmm. i'm not sure it's a, a born thing but part of uh, nature and nurture. It's a combination of nature and nurture, isn't it? That, uh, uh, yeah. So some people do have that kind of, let's call it a talent, and, uh, uh, and it's a valuable talent to nurture in sales, certainly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, what mistakes have you learned to avoid in, in your sales career? So uh, most important is don't push to close. Uh, you you have to be patient in, in this sales process and really don't uh, don't push to the end, of course, which is the, the, the objective of the process. But uh, if you push too much, the, the person on the other side will, will feel that and actually backfire. Because at the end, you they want uh, to believe that you are there because of them and not because of, of your uh, sales goal of, of the bonus that is expected at the end of the quarter. So I would say that uh, uh, my advice and mistakes I made uh, were actually connected to this uh, lack of uh, 
lack of patience and, and you know moving towards the goal it doesn't go all all the time like that uh, also advice would be and something i learned is that it is necessary to to think long term so don't be a short term player and especially don't be a, 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 a bonus uh, bonus addicted uh, a salesperson not of not many of the salespersons would uh, agree with me on that but i think that um, it is better to decision to drive your decisions based on uh, what makes the most sense from the customer point of view than what makes the uh, most sense from your bonus uh, point of view it was the hard learning i i made some mistakes i could done some things better but i think if i share this openly and then others could learn from that and, and avoid this this uh, these methods that we usually think as of shortcuts but actually there is no shortcut to, to success <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 no i agree not to push it's uh, it's very very tempting and uh yeah and a natural thing is is to rush through the process and <clears throat> something that i've discovered <clears throat> myself over time is <clears throat> oh dear um, if you rush through the process, uh, then you tend to miss things. Uh, so indeed. you come away without critical information that makes a difference for you. Yeah, That's indeed. Good. Okay. Um, tell me about the knowledge that you have mm -hmm. that supports your success in your current role and how you came by it. That's not necessarily just sales knowledge. I mean, it's, it's certainly how do you do the selling? You're clearly an expert in that. Um, but I'm interested in this question. I'm interested in understanding what your um, supplementary technical uh, mm -hmm. wider knowledge is and how you can yeah. find. Uh, very good question. I will I will just uh, shortly touch base the um, standard methodology. It is the sales uh, integrity, uh, uh, something that I think in all corporations uh, uh, is a standard method of uh, training the, the salesperson. So. Again, it is the book written by the Ron Willingham, How to Sell the People Want to Buy. And uh, uh, this is, uh, I would say, I seen it uh, in many in many homes when I visited my friends working for different companies, we all have the same book on our shelves. <laughs> and this is some standard thing. Uh, but what you said is actually more important. What is more? What is the supplement? What is... Um, what else uh, outside of our industry or our company that we can learn? Yeah. And actually, I, I, I started to investigate uh, that a lot of LinkedIn and I was connecting to the persons uh, who, who do sales, but in totally different industries, especially the people who do cold calling. Uh, so some, something that is quite opposite to what we do, you know, we schedule a meeting, we say from which company we're coming from, and then we go on the meeting face to face and we do this. But I was always intrigued how to catch attention uh, if you have only two minutes uh, uh, to speak on the, on the phone. So I actually wander into these different industries to see how they do the things, where their motivation is coming from. And uh, I think it is it is very important uh, uh, to look elsewhere and not to be bounded to, to your industry because a lot of solutions to the problems is already there, uh, but, but you need to search for. Yeah, and it's easy in a big organization, I think, to rest on the reputation. So uh, Med Medtronic, um, you just ring up and say, oh, hi, I'm from Medtronic, and they roll over and say, come on in, right? Exactly. But exactly, this is this is a very good point. And uh, uh, Clive, you're 100% right. When you're working for a, such a brand like Medtronic or Coca-Cola or uh, I don't know, Mercedes or I don't know what, you just say name of the company and door is already open. You know? uh, but for the guys that are uh, not coming from that side and still they are very successful, that was that was the part that I wanted to to learn more yeah absolutely there, there have been a few truly great salespeople. um if you if you google world's greatest salespeople, you find some names and i'm yeah, desperately yeah. trying to think of one but one of them in particular sold i don't know something about 200 times more cars than anybody else <laughs> in the country it's an american one of course but, and uh, it yeah. is always, always 
it is always good to speak uh, with the people about their sales experience. Uh, uh, I remember one colleague told me he went to buy his first car and he had a budget for, I don't know, let's say uh, Ford. And then he entered the, the dealer shop and the guy listened to him, opened the, the shelf, took the keys of Toyota. Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, actually, through threw over and said, I have a car for you. And he said, that car was over my limit. But, you know, the way how I caught these keys, it created emotion immediately. And I wanted just that car to buy, you know. So, so yes. Yeah. There's also a lot of lot of good examples, but that's uh, good stuff to learn. Yeah, certainly yeah. for selling cars, although <laughs> for selling um, uh, surgery equipment or something like yes, that, you, you cannot it. throw it. <laughs> what do you see as the talents, skills, and methods that you consider important in, in selling? Yeah. I, there, there are three specific, well, several specifically. We talked about talents already a little. Skills to me are the things that you have to practice to do better. A bit like sports, you know. Methods, yeah. I think you touched on this, but I'm interested yes. in hearing what yeah. methods you use within your teams, what what um, processes they're supposed to comply with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, so there's three separate things there, talent, skills mm -hmm. and methods. Well, I, I don't know what I will say, whether it is a talent, uh, but uh, it is, I think, crucial. Uh, and that is optimism. And I think for the salesperson, optimism is the key. And uh, uh, I learned a lot uh, uh, reading the book of uh, Daniel Goleman, Emotional Intelligence. And uh, uh, there, uh, uh, it is really a classic, classic book that I recommend to everyone to read. And there he actually uh, uh, describes the study that was done in the United States with sales uh, uh, persons working in uh, MetLife, so selling insurance. And you can imagine what is the rejection rate in when you're selling life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, laughing yeah. made me cough again. Yeah, and actually, they did a study on 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 how optimists perform and how pessimists perform. And of course, optimists were way better, and actually, they, they stayed longer in the industry. And even they did an uh, experiment on the optimists who didn't who failed the initial test. So uh, uh, the study leader, it was Salingham, he uh, convinced MetLife to hire these people, although they lack basic skills. And then he was measuring their success uh, in the next two years. And they, they were better than pessimists by 27% in the first year and 56 in the second year. Wow. So, and, and, That's and, basic. And, 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 explanation, and explanation is something that really uh, makes sense. If you're an optimist, you are dealing better with the uh, uh, you know bad situations with the failures because optimists will say okay my approach is not good maybe i should change it or this last person it, it uh, he had uh, just a bad day i will call him tomorrow while pessimists tend to think i'm a failure i'm the loser I, I cannot do anything right and and in sales it will not be success every day all the time and so how we deal with failure is important. So I think that optimism is a key skill. Then, uh, as I said, asking open questions as one of the methods uh, and techniques to be learned. And then uh, storytelling. I think that storytelling is also very important, especially for the opening and the closing. You know, in the opening stage, when you need to establish a rapport and when you really need to, to break the ice, uh, and uh, I would say to open this emotional door that we all have inside of us, storytelling is very powerful. And also for the closing, when you are envisioning this future state and the solution that you are provided and the outcomes, storytelling is, is, is very important. And as, as a last uh, skill or talent again, as I said, patience, patience to listen and, and, and really to be empathic, empathetic towards the, the customer on the other side. Yeah, I, I perhaps should I, I should add to that list qualities because it's, it's things like patience. Uh, yes, um, it, it's more of a quality than than a, a um, 
talent or a skill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These things are equally important. That's really, really yeah. good. What What about methods? What about step by step methods? Yeah, uh, step by step methods uh, actually go from uh, opening of the conversation, uh, then uh, of course uh, discovering the need and identifying the problem, then uh, demonstrating how the the solution or we, what we have can help and then moving towards the closing where actually we expect to to have the order and um, it is very important to understand that in this method in these small steps that you are going uh, you see the the, the solution uh, or the product is somewhere you know almost at the end so so you don't come and you say i have a product no you should first come and identify the need and what is the true problem and then think if the something that you are having in your bag can really help to identify uh, to 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 provide a solution to to the customer so i would say these four classic steps again that i learn on, on a basic sales course is something that that is very important and also uh, 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 why it is important to have it really structured as you said in a methodological way because in the case that the, the, the meeting didn't go well, uh, you can go backwards and you can then think, okay, maybe I missed something in this uh, uh, discovery phase. Maybe actually my, my, my solution is not the most adequate to this situation, or maybe I should be more aggressive on closing to really uh, uh, exit the conversation with the order or with the commitment of the, of the customer that they will you know, do the sales. So this, this why, this why, this all these blocks are very important and uh, actually will make uh, you more successful in any success in any uh, additional attempt that you make uh, at this with this customer. Yeah, I, I found uh, I've come across a lot of resistance amongst salespeople to um, to frameworks, um, but the research says the research that I've seen anyway suggests that using a method actually increases sales of course and, and i refer back to the situation when we then the, uh, when the outcome is not what we desire what are you going to do yeah. so you have to look back you have to look back at what, at what you did but if you don't have a structure how would you know what thing you should improve for the next conversation and i agree with you sales persons uh, that i have worked with uh, go away from this structured uh, uh, process, but uh, I always insisted with my team and I really put a lot of efforts uh, so all of us are trained on this uh, uh, because this is the only way how we can be better tomorrow than, 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 than today. Yeah, it's a great point. And also what is important, uh, it is not necessarily that you will, uh, uh, in all these phases, you will spend equal portion of time. Sometimes you will you know run through through something very fast sometimes you will spend more time maybe you will have to break the meeting uh, and then come tomorrow again and but at least you will know from where to start it will not be you know some uh, messy conversation you know it will you will know exactly uh, uh, what is your next question and, and what you want to do next with, with this customer yeah it's a, it's a bit like i sometimes use the story about uh, getting on an aircraft and hearing the captain say uh, oh, we're a bit short of time so I'm going to skip the checklist this morning all right everybody yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so uh, well, you get the point quite clearly yes, yes, um, yes. so um, can you tell me um, a bit more about the character traits and qualities so I've, I've referred to qualities so you this might be a bit repetitious but character traits and qualities that you consider important factors in sales success yeah, yeah. I, I think you perhaps alluded to a couple of these already but feel free yeah. to say them again well uh, I will bring in a, a new element that you and me already discussed about and that is uh, honesty uh, I think the honesty is the main character trait that salespeople should uh, should develop and uh, uh, honesty is the building block of trust. And trust will bring great results on the long term. And to put it very simply, what honesty means, uh, uh, it means uh, that you tell true uh, even when uh, you don't have to. 
And, and the classic example is when your customer is asking you about the product that you know that competition has something better to offer. Uh, but customer is already expressing interest and, and you, you can close that sales very easily, but you resist <laughs> this temptation and you tell honestly about something that actually would bring more value and uh, what is maybe better solution. So this is, this is a classic example where you build trust because next time when you come with a product that you are uh, sure that it is the best on the market, uh, for sure, this this customer will remember how it was last time, and and he will go for that very very easily. So I think this is very important. And also, let's look look at it uh, in a broader context. Uh, we know that the salesperson don't have the best reputation. You know, it is they will do we will do everything to make a sales. You know, but if you're really honest, you will differentiate yourself from from everyone else on the market. And this is what, what where you can build your, your competitive advantage. But being different, different I, I, when we speak about honesty, uh, I think it will bring uh, uh, success, but also it will make you feel much better and your relationships with, with the customers will stay for a long time. Yeah, I think that's a, a great point to make. Mm -hmm. I talk about the trust hill. Um, as you said, um, uh, the, the starting point for customers is, is well, this person is, is being paid to tell me what I want to hear. Right? Yes, or, or yes. Tell me yes. things that are positive. Uh, uh, and therefore, yeah. I can't really rely on what they say. And, and if you want to influence customers, you, you've got to be able to get over that. And you can only get over that by climbing the, what I call the trust hill. Yeah, exactly. exactly so. I think this is, this is the most uh, the most important trait. And uh, I think that we all have, have to work a lot in these times on being honest in all possible yeah. situations. And uh, yeah. uh, it's easy to and, say, isn't it? It's, it's not so straightforward to yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. deliver that, that um, honesty in a way that is acceptable without demolishing your own position. You and that in that situations you have to think uh, about the big picture, about the long term. Yeah. So well, not not just about today, but also about tomorrow. Also about situation when you're going to visit that same customer, but you will change the company, and you will come to that same customer. So he will he 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 will uh, 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 judge you by the by 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 how honest you were, not by by the products you were selling at that time. So yeah. we, we are. This is really something that builds our personal brand. Yeah, and and we take that with us. No, no matter in which company we work. Yeah, yeah, I agree exactly. So that's very good. Okay. Um, so if you had to distill all of this into one piece of advice for a newcomer, um, what would it be? Mm -hmm. uh, I. Uh, I would say that uh, for the newcomer, that uh, tomorrow is another day to, to close the sales. So what is important is to keep playing. And uh, uh, I, I recall one anecdote from, from basketball. Basketball is very popular in, in my country and neighboring countries. And there was one young player going to NBA he was very successful and talented. And one evening, uh, he finishes the match with uh, 13 attempts and zero scores. And he is sitting desperate in the locker room. And then the NBA veteran comes, taps him on the shoulder and says, tomorrow is another game. I, I think this anecdote uh, 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 brings a lot of, of this perspective of, of, of the long-term process that we are doing. Uh, that sales uh, also is not uh, is not a, a football match that lasts for 90 minutes and that we have a clear winner and loser. I think it is more as an infinite game, something that I took from uh, Simon Sinek and how he is displaying this, that uh, it is important to keep playing, keep playing with, with a good spirit, with the good intentions, and uh, uh, really to, to enjoy what you work. Because uh, sales uh, brings solutions. Sales is, is helping people. So you should enjoy it and really uh, uh, think that what you haven't achieved today, you will make tomorrow.
that's really good advice that's really good advice nicola and uh and uh, particular i like in particular i like what you said about helping people what is selling all about it's a good question and i pose it to people sometimes but for me the number one thing is helping people do what they want to do exactly so echo that what you say exactly so and so it is very nice job and uh, uh people should really enjoy it and be proud that they are doing sales you know very much so this has been a tremendous interview i think there's been you've produced some really really great material and some wonderful book recommendations uh um they will they should be apparent but i'll, I'll when we do the transcript i'll make sure that they're they're clear in there mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so I'd, I thank you for coming on this interview. And thank you, I, I thank you for the invitation. To you again in the future. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Uh, and uh, this was a really great experience for me, and yeah. I enjoyed yeah. it and learned a lot from you as well. So this is always my point. What can I learn more? So. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, <laughs> all the all the best, and hope to speak to you soon. <laughs>